And I don't know how much you know, so if you start yawning you know, very evidently, I'll assume that you know and I'll move faster. <laughs> I'll try to uh, finish soon. So 11S, if you don't know anything about it, you just should know that it's, it's a simpler, more secure, multi-hopping version of Wi-Fi Direct. <laughs> um, the Open 11S uh, project, um, the goals are the ones stated here. We, we saw that there were many uh, mesh technologies out there, but there wasn't one based on a, on a standard. And we started working on this uh, a while ago for the One Laptop Per Child project, and then we moved it to the kernel. And um, we would like to see a standard mesh technology out there. Mesh has a place, uh, there's, there's a demand for it in the market, but uh, we think that there will be more if there's one based on a standard. So the project is backed up by uh, in order of importance, uh, these companies here, um, Cozybit, we essentially did pretty much all the work. Nortel, who signed a, uh, signed a check uh, for us and then they went bankrupt. <laughs> then uh, one laptop uh, per child, uh, Google and, and Mana Energy. And um, some of you thought that this would never get standardized. Uh, <laughs> We were told it almost exactly that a couple of years ago. Yeah, so finally... A couple of years uh, ago is the key here. <laughs> finally, uh, in July, the 802 Executive Committee approved uh, draft uh, 12 of the, of the standard. Of the, and uh, that means that there will be no more technical changes on, on this until it gets ratified in uh, September. So this will become standard. And it's fantastic because we've been coding a moving draft for, uh, for a long time and we're kind of fed up of uh, having to change <laughs> things here and there. And we have a bunch of stuff implemented, if I can do like F5. F5. And then, so 11S, as you all no, it's implemented as part of Mac 211. It's a new uh, mesh, uh, sorry, a new interface uh, mode. But in addition to what's in the kernel, there are a bunch of user space utilities and tools that somehow use it. Um, we have uh, IW has a uh, mesh support. We have patches for Wireshark that uh, patch the latest uh, draft. We have uh, tests available on, on our website. We have. Uh, a wireless uh, medium D that I'll talk about it later. That's for uh, simulations and testing uh, deployments of uh, mesh deployments. And um, of the standard, this is what's currently implemented. So if anyone is familiar with the draft, which hasn't been published, then you cannot get easily uh, online. But uh, this is what's uh, what's there. We have the right frame format. We have frame forwarding, beaconing. Beaconing is only used uh, for, for discovery of, of uh, mesh nodes, so there's no, um, there's no issues with uh, timing, synchronization, it's just a, a simple uh, beaconing, so we can use the, the existing Mac 11 beaconing for this. We have a super duper authentication that's introduced in, in 11S that was implemented by uh, Dan Harkins and we integrated this. This is a more secure version of uh, WPA. It's uh, resistant to offline dictionary attacks. And it was great because by the time, like the, the, the week when we released this, there was a researcher in Germany who had cracked WPA, VSK, using Amazon EC2 for a, like, for a $3 attack, like $3 of computing time, so that's it. We have a mesh peering, both open and authenticated. Open. It's all in the kernel plus IW. The authenticator requires a, a daemon in the same model as WPA supplicant. In fact, we would like this to be a WPA supplicant, and we've done some work in that direction. We have some licensing um, issues between um, Dan Harkins, who was the person who wrote uh, the, the authentication uh, part, and, and Uni, who um, I, I have to get both of them in the same room, and I haven't been able to do that. So. I'll keep trying. 
encryption, which is essentially reusing everything that was done in Mac uh, 8211 for IVSS, RSN. So it's, it's, it's great, then we could reuse all that. Path selection, we support the one that's in the standard, HWMP. And there's also a way to extend if you have your own vendor specific, mm, super secret path selection or whatever you want to use, you could also do that. Um, we've been talking to the Batman guys, that like would be a good way to uh, integrate uh, their stuff, have the same, the same path selection algorithm uh, using this uh, framework. Link metric, uh, proxying and bridging, and the most recent release introduced gate announcements, which is just a way to find the exit uh, to any mesh. This is what's missing, and essentially is everything that requires um, hardware or low-level support. Uh, Mac AO2, uh, sorry, Open to 11 s uh, the stated goal of the project is to be vendor neutral. And so everything that was easy to do at Mac AO211 uh, level or in user space, we've done it. Everything that requires uh, a lot of work on one particular driver, we have not. And that includes synchronization, which is a pretty hard problem in mesh. If any one of you is familiar with that. Contention-free access. Beacon collision avoidance, which is the uh, special type of beaconing that's used in, in mesh. It's very similar to AP beaconing, except it has a provision for avoiding collisions with, with other uh, peers. Uh, proxy protocol, power save, because we couldn't understand the code, um, nor reuse it. And we are currently working on high throughput uh, support with uh, Luis Rodriguez uh, help. Um, and this will probably be released uh, in, in the next uh, few weeks. How do you use it? Right now, um, if you are trying to do an open mesh, you can just use IW to create a mesh interface and then join an open mesh network. Or for a secure mesh, we currently have this uh, mesh demon. We're waiting to see these licensing issues uh, resolved with WPA supplicant. We would like to get rid of these. And what's that? Didn't we want like SAE anyway for non-mesh use cases? Yes, but uh, the SAE code, um, it's under BSD plus a provision that forbids sub-licensing, so it cannot make it upstream to the WPA sub So yes, you would want it, but we are going to have to rewrite it. We have to convince that Harkins to do it. There are other issues. There was also the fact that we are using elliptic, uh, elliptic uh, curve cryptography that requires uh, OpenSSL and um, Unity prefers not to have an open SSL dependency and the WPS applicant for embedded use, uh, which makes sense. But so are there, there are a few uh, contention issues to work with. So until we have that working, we just uh, have a demon that uses an LA211 and, um, and establishes uh, secure uh, mesh links. This is an example of a, of a mesh D config file. Very simple. And so once you have a mesh up, oh, you can sign an IP address. What's the format? Can you go back one slide? What's the format of a group? Is that? What's the format of group? Is that uh, like base 256? Sorry. Yeah. I mean, that should be one number. These are the no, wait. Two numbers? elliptic curve groups that are defined by IETF, uh, the right. RFC that uh, assigns a number to each elliptic. Oh, curve. okay. So it's like the group numbers. Yes. Okay. It's not the group definition itself. That's yeah, okay. right. It's just the ID. Right. right. Yeah. yeah no. So once you have a. <laughs> oh, then you're going to sign an address uh, here just to emphasize that this works with IPv4 and IPv6, of course. Now, once you have a mesh up, and I was going to try to show you this. Live, but actually, I'll show you this here and then I can transition to. I, I, I brought a few mesh nodes. We have three mesh nodes here. I'll show you this on, on a live uh, mesh, but you can see what are the stations. Um, you can see what are the paths to your peers. We have a bunch of uh, statistical you know, configuration values through DevFS. Um, you have statistics. You can use IW to set all of these mesh parameters. They're all defined in, in, in the draft pretty much um, with those exact names. 
And if you want info, you can find on this website. And now, let me see if I can find my terminal window. Yeah, I gotta mirror this. Let's see, can any, anyone see my pointer? Not my, oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, there it is. Can you increase the size of the yeah. font? Thanks. Better? Yep. So we've got... Uh, Can you just one more size? <laughs> bigger? Yeah, just one more. Thanks. <laughs> 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 so we have uh, two clear links between these two nodes, which makes sense. And um, I actually tried to create a multi hub before, but um, it self healed itself, which is one of the nice properties of the protocol. So now we have uh, direct links to it. And I don't know what that means. This is too big. And you can see that we have uh, two routes that are direct, uh, so the destination is here, the next hop is here, and actually this is a two hop route, and this is a single hop route. So I should be able to ping all the other nodes, this one and this one. And if you have a sniffer up on channel, I think it's channel one, you should see that these are uh, two hop uh, frames. Everything is encrypted, this is a secure mesh uh, right now. So it's. Um, so you wouldn't see that if it's too hot. You wouldn't see that. <laughs> well, actually, you would see the retransmissions, but uh, I mean, you would have to see that the frame is. You can't tell the difference. Oh, no, you cannot. The right, because or the you mesh, don't know that it's the, the same mesh frame. Is encrypted. So yeah, you, you're welcome to try it. <laughs> um, and um, and I think that's all I wanted to say about this, unless anyone. Wants. So where does this code live? This lives under uh, Macedo 211. Mesh underscore three, there are three files. D link, HWMP, and D table. Plus some changes in rx.c and tx.c. And it has to be enabled. I think it's disabled by default. It's config uh, mesh. Um, and that's. In Can sync with draft 12 at this point. <coughs> What's that? It's pretty much in sync with draft 12 at this point. Yes, at least the frame for so we don't claim that we've implemented everything that's in, in draft uh, 12, but what is there, we've, we've made an effort to bring it up yeah. to uh, so the frame formats and the, uh, the element IDs and yeah. all that are. are so it, in theory, it would interoperate with some yes. independent form. Yeah, yeah. And is there any? Yeah. Probably not. Uh, Will there, there be? Probably not. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's quite disparaging. Will. Um, uh, not sure. That would probably be a BSD1. There is a, there's a, there's a uh, free BSD1, actually. Yeah. Is it up to date? No, that one is not. Because the uh, guy who wrote it has been hired by Apple since then, and, and then they don't let him contribute <laughs> to that for some kind of problem. And there is actually, a, I think there's a running. Uh, implementation that's uh, all embedded. So that's something that uh, 
Uh, I was wondering, were you planning on um, talking about the, what you used to actually do the emulation of, of the software uh, and, the, and the wireless medium stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's what's next on the agenda, the okay. wireless medium D. But uh, I, I wanted to start with this first, uh, just mesh specific. Wireless medium D is not, uh, that's why I put it like a separate thing. We used it, it's very useful for mesh, but it's not specific uh, for mesh. And you can use it for another, other cool stuff. Around. Talk about this uh, in a moment, yeah. But um, for the mesh, can you describe some of the use cases of uh, users who are picking up this software and doing stuff with it, and where they're applying it? So I would say that there are like three major places where mesh is used. And in fact, uh, mesh is currently being used. It's just that this is the non-standard version of the mesh, right? So there are like rapid deployment, emergency services, uh, networks, um, military, of course, and uh, rural areas where you just want to give coverage to a, to a village or something and you don't want to have a proper planning of your tools. Of your so Those are the three like, that we know that are currently being used. So it's more embedded system mesh where you're talking about these guys, it's not client PC mesh. PC to PC. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't know. So what I know is again what's out there. What what validates that mesh? It is actually something that uh, that serves a purpose. Uh, whether this is going to um, be used for other uses, it's it's hard to know. I mean, the uh, we've worked both on Wi-Fi Direct and 11s, and from the from my technical perspective, I, I definitely prefer these. I, I, I think that uh, Wi-Fi Direct has um, <clears throat> has its purpose, and one of them is to uh, reuse a bunch of legacy code that was already uh, written, and, and so that's why you have to embark on a like a group negotiation when when two peers are actually identical. You have to discuss and decide who is the group owner and who who is not, and who is just the end and all that. And I think that the reason for that is because there was all this bunch of legacy access point security protocols that rely on this access point versus station relationship, where here in 11S, since nobody was watching these intently, they could do something much cleaner. The authentication algorithm, uh, algorithm is called simultaneous authentication of equals, which sounds almost communist, and it's it's very nice because that's what, uh, what what it is, right? In a mesh network, we're all equals, right? And um, and so there's no need for doing this uh, this uh, role negotiation and so on. Authentication is like four frames versus the authentication of uh, Wi-Fi Direct is what like twelve, like eight for uh, WPS plus four for WPA something. Looking at Uni because I know. Uni. That's not the authentication, but uh, you're comparing completely different things, but uh, okay. feel free to do so. I'm okay, no, you, you, you can interrupt, of course, yeah. Um, so, that, um, yeah, that was what I wanted to show low mesh, and 